Hey guys, so glad to have you here for this video. I really felt like I just had to sit down and do this video because something happened in my little makeup world that just does not seem to happen ever. And the situation was I did an order on Ulta and I saw this brand called Lottie London and I'm completely unfamiliar with this line. Never tried a thing from it, haven't watched any videos on it, you know, just haven't really sought out any information. But I thought I'm gonna randomly just try some of these things. And I didn't have super high hopes, honestly. So I didn't like go and purchase everything in the line, but I thought I'll just get a random assortment and just get a taste. I bought five things, and no lie, I really enjoy all five items. And that just doesn't seem to happen these days. Like just trying a random new drugstore brand, and I feel like there are lots, there's so many things coming to Ulta in particular. Different lines here and there, and a lot of stuff, I feel like it's kind of entering into the drugstore marketplace at a higher price point than a lot of people are used to paying. I mean, you guys know it's not unheard of to see a $15, $16 foundation in the quote-unquote drugstore. So when I saw this stuff coming in at like $7.99 for a foundation, six bucks for a bronzer, um, a $12 eyeshadow palette, that was kind of exciting for me to see. So I got the stuff home and like I said, I really enjoy every product and that surprised me a lot because I'm just used to a lot of hits and misses, you know, something's working, inconsistencies here and there with whatever kind of line it might be. Might be drugstore, might be high-end. So in this video, Video. nothing super fancy. I'm just going to go through each of the five things that I try. I've got them all on my face right now, so I'll show you, you know, how they apply and stuff. And I just thought this was definitely worth sharing because this was kind of an exciting thing and it does lead me to want to try more from this brand. First thing that I have here is a foundation. And it's really exciting when you get a foundation shopping solely off of Ulta's website and it turns out to be the right shade because sometimes things are really off there as you're trying to like look at their shades and figure it all out. But this is the Selfie Red medium coverage matte foundation. It says water-based foundation enriched with vitamin C. This little packaging here, by the way, I'm just realizing I'm totally matching. But I have this in the shade golden. The cap twists off and it's squeezy, but it's kind of a hard plastic. That's maybe one thing I don't love because it's working fine now, but as you start to run out of this product, like it's a pretty firm bottle and you might have trouble squeezing it out when you get toward the end. The texture on this foundation, it's not um, as liquidy as say a Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Pore a little more thick than that, and I think that does help this product coverage-wise. I just kind of spot it across my skin, and then I just chose to blend it out this time with my Sigma F80 brush, and the coverage is really quite good. They call this a medium coverage foundation. I first off like that they are just saying that. I feel like sometimes coverage only gets talked about with foundations in terms of the marketing of them, when it's like super full coverage, and they try to call it that, and a lot of times it falls short. This claims to be medium coverage, and I think it's a, definitely on the fullest end of medium coverage. Like it's close to full. And it's a matte finish, yes, but it's such a natural matte finish. The staying power with this has been good for me as well. And I don't know, it's just so exciting. It's a really low price tag for a drugstore foundation these days, you know, $7 and change. So it's giving me coverage, it's evening out the skin, it's matte but not too matte, you know, not to the point of looking drying at all. I just think it has a really fresh appearance on the skin. The brand turns out a good foundation, you know, I'm listening. I'm here. I want to see what else you got. So now I really wish I would have gotten a concealer from this line. I didn't do that this round, but I will no doubt be picking up a concealer in the future. In terms of the order of products, um, the next thing that I would put on after just some concealer and maybe a little bit of powder is this Tan Time Bronzer. I got it in the shade Light to Medium. It's really cute. It's got little stars on the product, and the bronzer itself is super soft, just very pigmented, very smooth. It's completely matte. And I would say this is probably about as warm as I would go for a bronzer, but I'm really liking what it does for my skin. I think it warmed up my skin tone just how I would want a bronzer to do. I used my soft angled contour brush from Sigma and I went around my hairline. I went um, in the hollow of the cheek. I went down under the chin and neck area. And I didn't have to use a lot of the product. I don't know if you could see on video, but I was just like blotting my brush into this. And again, the price points of this stuff makes it all the more impressive. It's $6.99. And I mean, it was just very easy to use. I don't know that um, a super fair, like cool tone person would love this shade, but if you're around my skin tone, which is kind of light to medium, I thought this worked really well and it is called light to medium. The blush from this brand is so good. I, I so want to try more of these shades. It's the Blush Crush Blush and I have it in the shade Drake. I know a lot of people roll their eyes at this description, but this is truly peachy pink right here. It's a peachy pink blush. It's not too light, not too dark. Um, 
um, it's the perfect amount of like just a gentle flush to the cheeks. I just again blot my brush into this product. You don't have to stir it up, scrub into it whatsoever. It would appear as you look at this guys that it's a baked blush because it is that kind of rounded and domed up um, design, but really it doesn't have any of the characteristics of a baked blush. It's not dry. It actually feels borderline creamy to the touch, and this is a satin finish, so it's got just a little hint of a glow to it, and if you use this alone and don't top with any highlight, like you still have a really fresh, pretty look to the cheeks. Absolutely love this blush. It's a total home run, two thumbs up. Pigmented Amazing Blush for $5 and change. Next thing that I got from this line is the Shadow Swatch Eyeshadow Palette in the Russ. So this is a 12 color palette. $12.99 for this palette. Um, I think that's completely reasonable. Thinking about something similar in size that's out in the drugstore right now, like L'Oreal's palettes. They've got some longer palettes like this with, I believe, this amount of shades in it, and they're charging close to 20 bucks for those. So it's called the Russ, and yeah, it's going to be primarily a warm color tone palette here. You've got a mix of matte and shimmer, which is really nice to see, and it's in all the right places, really. You've got like your light matte sh cream shade up here, You've got um, a couple of different kind of mid-tone mattes to play with. And then down in this end, we've got a nice deep berry color and like a black brown shade. In the midst of that, you've got some metallic shades. You've got some shades with a hint of shimmer. We've got colors that are no doubt super warm, but also some kind of taupey shades. The interesting thing about this palette is I look at it and you could completely bypass the warm shades at times and give yourself a totally cool look. You know, you could focus in on like maybe this shimmery color, put in a little taupe with that mix in some of the dark brown, and no one would know that you used a palette called Rust. As I look at this, I am getting some Urban Decay Naked Heat vibes, so I'm just going to hold them up here for you. You can see there's a lot more richness, I think, in the Naked Heat palette, just deeper tones, a little just heavier on the orange stuff happening there, and the Lottie London palette has um, some more light shades, more cool shades. It's just not a strictly 100% warm palette like Naked Heat. Quality-wise, I found these shades to be pretty consistent pretty easy to work with. I would say maybe my favorites in the palette are actually the matte colors, which is sometimes surprising. I think it can at times be easier for brands to turn out like a really good shimmery shadow. Maybe it's just because you get pickier with mattes, like they can tend to be dry. They can tend to apply a little bit patchy or whatever, and these seem just really smooth and easy to work with. And speaking of doing a warm or cool look, you could also do an all shimmer or all matte look with this palette pretty easily as well. Just thinking quality-wise, what I would compare these shadows too. I mean, there is a, a nice softness to the texture, but it's not as soft or as maybe super intense as like a Wet n Wild Comfort Zone palette. Those, if you've tried that, you know what I'm talking about. It's a tiny dip into the product. It's a use as little as possible because you could go too far with it. This, I think, might be a little bit more beginner friendly because while the shades are pigmented and you're not going to be in a struggle to make them show up, they're not something I feel like I have to be incredibly careful with. And part of that might also be the color scheme. You know, you've only got um, a few shades in this palette that I would call um, really on the dark end of the spectrum, and those are those three right down here. Otherwise, you got a pretty good sized chunk of mid-tones and then some light shades. So I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm not scared of any of these colors, and I do think they work nicely together. For the look that I did today, I actually tried to work in a little bit of a cooler tone just to show you how a taupe works in with some of these warmer shades. So I first put on Milani eyeshadow primer, which I pair with basically any eyeshadow that I use. I patted this center taupe shimmery shade all over my lids first, and I kind of worked that up into my crease as well. This is the kind of shadow that I would definitely consider for a one shadow look because it gives you just the slightest amount of sheen, but also a little bit of depth and definition too. Then I decided to work some of the berry color into this look. It's kind of a burgundy berry shade. Definitely see the red in this color as I sheer it out, but I worked that kind of into the outside of my crease area. Then I kind of wanted to go above that and warm things up a bit more with one of these matte neutrals. I use the warmest of the two and just with a light wispy brush here. I use this just kind of like a transition shade. And then I use the lightest shade in this palette under my brow, uh, just closest to my brow, and then also around the inner corner of the eye. Now we're going to jump away from the palette for just a second because in the scope of this uh, little eye look, I use the eyeliner that I have. This is the AM to PM Cole Eyeliner 
your pencil in black. So I'll just show you this going on right away. It goes on super duper smooth and so I went across the upper lash line and I actually winged this out and I felt I had the control to do so. The reason why I really wanted to go shimmery on my lids today was to show you how a pencil liner can go on top of it and still maintain full color because a lot of times going over a shimmer can lessen or kind of weaken the intensity of a black eyeliner or any colored eyeliner that you're trying to layer on top. So this performed really well in that way and I'll get back to more details on that liner in a second. And very much keeping this a look that's on the upper part of the eye. I need all the lift and awakeness that I can get today with this. So um, I curled my lashes. I applied some L'Oreal Voluminous Lash Paradise to the upper lashes. Just a little bit of uh, CoverGirl Clump Crusher water resistant on the lower lashes and then put on some false lashes. I think these are my Coco lashes in the style called Soho. And really just love the finished look. I think it's a great everyday look. This is a really good everyday palette. I think it can take you to a dramatic place if that's where you want to go, but it's not going to keep you super confined in terms of tone at all times. And actually I do feel that way about Naked Heat. I feel like it's a very predictable palette and you're going to just stay in that same color zone pretty much all the time. If you love, love, love your warm shades, that's maybe not a problem for you. But here I think it's fun to work in, you know, a couple of these taupe colors. This one even has just the slightest bit of lilac to it, which I thought is an interesting twist. You've got a good gold in here, kind of an old gold type shade. Your shimmery champagne, all the mattes that you'd really want or need thrown into the mix. So I think this is a pretty darn good little $12 uh, drugstore eye palette. Back to this liner. Um, I want to show you, I, I think this is a great test of a liner. If you're ever trying to decide how creamy it is and how easily it can transfer, just barely hold on to the product with just a couple of fingers and let it absolutely graze your skin just in a swatch and see what you pick up there. And if you feel like you're picking up a good intensity of product by barely holding on to the liner, I think you're on to something there. So I feel as though I am with this product. It just transfers super duper easily and it's just as easy on the eyes. You know, with this eye look, I didn't struggle whatsoever. I was not applying a ton of pressure and I was able to top off a shimmery shade and still have maximum intensity out of this product. Now, yesterday I had this um, not only on my upper lash line, but also in my waterline, lower inner rim, and on my lower lash line. And um, I'm not going to beat around the bush here. I cried yesterday. Momming was not easy yesterday. And uh, part of what comes into that might be having a couple kids that are sick. And I'm sick. And house is just sick right now. And my mascara, which I'll probably talk about this in a different video, but my mascara was flaking off. But the liner really didn't move. It faded a little bit from the lower inner rim, but was not completely absent from the inner rim at the end of the day. And what was on my lower lash line actually had to be removed with remover. This is one of those liners that sets and just doesn't leave. And I bought this for less than $5. Five for five on products here from a brand I was completely unfamiliar with, did not research a bit, and I'm liking everything that I got. So I'm excited to try some more from this Lottie London line. I would say two things that I'm especially intrigued about would be I got to see how the concealer works from this line and I've got to try a lip product. The lip product I've been wearing throughout this video is Max Velvet Teddy Lipstick. Um, where has this lipstick been all my life? Is that not a perfect color? Yeah, just mind blown. Love that. But thank you guys for watching. If you've tried anything from this brand that I should know about, let me know in the comments section and I will see you soon. Bye!